Hey guys, I'm back here for part two of my top 25 favorite horror films. Now, like I said in the last part, the first uh, movies I'm going to be talking about are in no particular order. You know, it's really hard for me to pick over what, if uh, you know, I love all these films, so it's really hard for me to say that I like one more than the other. And so some of these, you know, some of these I do like more than other ones, and some of these are actually tied. So I would say the first a uh, good amount are in no particular order, but I would say the last five films that I talk about in this video are my definitive top five. They've always been my top five favorite ones, and they always will be. But the uh, first ones I'm going to talk about are in no real particular order. Just like in part one, I didn't really put them in a particular order. Because I, you know, some of them I like more than the others, but some of them were tied, and I didn't think it made sense to, like, say, oh, this one's number 19 and number 18. So, uh, the ones I'm going to talk about now are in no particular order, but let's go ahead and get started. And the first one I'm going to talk about is kind of a modern movie. It came out in the early 2000s, and when I first saw this, uh, I thought it was a really, really creepy movie. And this one is called Darkness Falls. And this is probably one movie that's not going to be on a lot of people's lists. But I really, really love this movie. Basically, the film, um, it starts off telling the story of this old woman named Matilda, who um, back um, a long, long time ago, um, whenever a, uh, a child would lose a tooth in this small town of Darkness Falls, uh, they would bring it to her in exchange for a gold coin. And the townspeople started calling her the Tooth Fairy. Well, one day the uh, fire broke out in her house and it left her badly burned. And so um, her skin was so sensitive that the only time she came, she, the only time she went out of her house was at night and only wearing a porcelain mask. Well, one day two children went to go visit her and they never came back. And so the townspeople believed that she did something to them. And so they ended up executing her. Well, before she, uh, before she uh, died, she laid a curse upon Darkness Falls that basically said, you know, every time a child would lose her tooth, she would come back and take it. And if any child looked at her, she would kill them. And that's basically the start of the story. And then the rest of the film follows a, um, you know, a, sort of a, a man who uh, ended up witnessing her, seeing her as a kid. And now he's grown up and he's trying to protect his old girlfriend's uh, little brother from her. And, you know, um, like I said, it was, it's from the early 2000s, so it has that vibe. Even the front cover, it says, you know, for sheer terror, it runs rings around the ring. Um, I would agree. I think that this movie is creepier than the, well, not as creepy as the ring, but more. I think more stuff goes on it. Well, I don't know. I would say this one and the ring are kind of tied when it comes to creepiness. But, you know, it has that early 2000s feeling, and um, it's not one that I don't, it's not one I think will be on a lot of people's lists, but I really enjoy it, and I thought I would mention it, you know. And this is probably one of the only movies that's really not a classic movie. All the other films I'm going to talk about are mostly classics. Now this next one, even though I tried to, um, tried to leave out a lot of sequels, I had to put this one and I had to put the other two films in this trilogy in it and that's the Evil Dead trilogy and I'm going to start off with Army of Darkness and I absolutely love this movie. Um, I know some people don't like it because it went into a horror comedy type thing and the first film was like more straightforward horror and the second one was sort of a horror comedy uh, and then this one is a straightforward horror comedy but I've always loved this movie. Um, you know I think it's the comedic moments work and it's also got good gore in it, and it's good, you know, it's a lot of really great scenes in it. Uh, I'm sure everyone has seen it, so I really don't need to talk about it, but yeah, Army of Darkness. Now the next one, like I said with uh, Night of the Living Dead, uh, I, you know, that's definitely one of my favorite classic horror movies, and this is another one of my favorites, and it's the original House on Haunted Hill. This is such an iconic film, of course. Vincent Price. This is you know, like probably one of one of his most iconic uh, portrayals, you know, as a, you know Frederick Lauren, just this creepy guy who just rented this old house and that happens to be haunted. And you know, it's um, there's a lot of really, really spooky moments that I think still live up. You know, this movie, even though it's been around for years, I, I think it's one movie that can still creep people out on first viewing, and it's one movie that you know, has lived on and will always live on. It's a 
true classic. Next one is Pet Cemetery. Another great one. I remember growing up and watching this on TV and just being really creeped out by it. Especially the scenes with the uh, the mother's uh, aunt, uh, Zelda, I think was her name. Yeah. And of course, Fred Gwynn is the old man, you know, sometimes dead is better. You know, that's just an iconic, you know, scene. And, and of course, a little kid coming back and wanting to, trying to kill his family. Just so many different, you know, moments in this movie that I love. And it's, it's you know, a movie that comes out all the time on TV. And it's, it's really a, you know, it's again another film that's lived on. And, it, and I know it will continue to live on. So, Pet Cemetery. I'm going to go ahead and uh, talk about the other two films in the Evil Dead series. Um, Evil Dead 1 and 2. Um, if I had to pick one as my favorite of the trilogy, it's really, really hard, but I might say Evil Dead 2. Because it was actually the first one that I saw. You know, I, I went, uh, I believe I got it at Kmart when they used to sell horror movies on Halloween. And they had Evil Dead 2 there, and I remember pick, and I remember buying it and thinking, at that point, it was the goriest horror film that I've ever seen. Um, but it was also so over the top and, and crazy, you know, with a hag down in the basement, or, you know, Ash's hand is coming to life and everything. And then, of course, you know, Ash, he replaces his hand with the chainsaw. So many iconic moments in, Evil, in the Evil Dead franchise. And, of course, when I saw the first one, then I thought that the first one was the goriest movie that I've ever seen. And the first one is more of a straightforward uh, straightforward horror film. You know, there are a few goofy moments, but for the most part, it's straight up gory, gory, and just bloody fun. Um, I love all three Evil Dead films, and I could not make a top horror film list without including all three. You know. And as I said about uh, gore, the goriest horror films I've ever seen, you know, back when I was younger, I always thought Evil Dead was the goriest movie ever. And then I saw stuff like Dead Alive or, I don't know, there's so many other films that, I, that I've seen now that really, I think, outdo it. But I still think because of the impact that the Evil Dead films left, I, you know, they're still, uh, you know, special and they're, and they're classics. Here's another classic by the great Dario Argento. Suspiria. Now remember, this movie has, uh, when, I, when I first saw this movie, it really did creep me out. And I think that this movie has the right mix of gore and creepy atmosphere. You know, Dario Argento is the master of good, creepy atmosphere, while at the same time, tons of go good gore and good bloody scenes. And of course, you know, he does great with, you know, uh, colors in his films. Like I remember in some scenes, you know, there might be a, a, a red light on a character's face and in the background there's like a blue light maybe coming out of a out of a you know a window or something you know Dario Argento is the master of you know combining this great atmosphere with uh, amazing colors and making his films look beautiful you know and at the same time you know uh, right mix of gore and uh, story and just just everything and this is definitely one of his one of his most popular films and it's one of my all-time favorites now. It, this wasn't even a movie I grew up watching. A lot of these movies I grew up watching and I've uh, had for years. And this one I haven't. I haven't had for years. And I think after the second or third watch, it slowly became one of my favorites. So Suspiria. Now this next one is more of a goofy, uh, sort of a goofy movie. Uh, but it's also just a really fun, great uh, Halloween film. It's The Midnight Hour. This was a TV movie, and um, yeah, this is uh, basically just a fun movie. You know, kids, they accidentally, uh, they live in a small town, and they accidentally wake the dead up. And, um, you know, there's a, one scene of all the zombies in this uh, Halloween party, of, um, and they're all just dancing around and everything. And this is definitely one movie that I wish they played on TV because it's not available. I mean, it it's on DVD, but it's really expensive now. And um, it's one movie that... It really neat that I think that uh, everybody should watch on Halloween, or it's one movie that you can watch on Halloween every year, and it really needs a Blu-ray release. You know, I don't know why it hasn't gotten it. I've seen so many other movies that don't deserve Blu-ray releases have gotten it, and this movie deserves a new release. So The Midnight Hour, just a great uh, Halloween, just a fun Halloween movie. You know, not scary at all, just a, just a fun, you know, just a fun movie to watch. 
Now, next one is another movie I know some people will probably disagree with, but 13 Ghosts, and this is the remake. And this was one movie that I remember gro growing up watching. I remember the house, and it was huge. Basically, the house, it's this big glass house with these writings over the, wa over the walls. And they're basically containment spells to keep uh, the ghosts, you know, the ghosts aren't allowed to cross that. And um, this is a really, really uh, a fun movie. I watched it again today. And um, it's one movie that's always been one of my favorite ones. I know that a lot of people don't like it because it's a remake to a classic horror film, but I've always enjoyed this one, 13 Ghosts. Here's another one that a lot of people... Uh, uh, I've seen a lot of people uh, say they really enjoy it, enjoy this movie, and I'm glad because I've always loved this movie. The first time I saw this movie, I could not watch it because I was really creeped out, and I was very, very young. I was maybe eight, nine. I watched so many horror movies when I was that young, but the movie is Sleepy Hollow, and this is directed by uh, Tim Burton, and it stars Johnny Depp and Christina Ricci. And Tim Burton is a master of, you know, beautiful and dark films. And this is definitely one of his best, in my opinion. Sleepy Hollow, this, a great cast. And, um, you know, great atmosphere all around. I've talked about this movie so many times on my channel, so I don't want to do it anymore. But Sleepy Hollow, one of my all-time favorites. Up next, we have Phantasm. And this is another movie that I did not grow up watching. But ever since I have seen it, it's become one of my all-time favorites. You know, you got the story of this kid living with his older brother, and he thinks that there's something weird going on at the funeral parlor, and you find out that it's being run by the tall man, who is this crazy, uh, you know, this really tall guy, and he's got his dwarves, and of course his flying spear. Um, you know, this is... He's definitely a horror icon. He's right up there, in my opinion, with Michael or Freddy or Jason or Leatherface. I think the tall man, is, you know, is always one of them. Um, two things. Why is this not on Blu-ray? And where's Phantasm V? Um, they actually announced Phantasm V. They had a trailer for it last year on April. They released the trailer for Phantasm V. Where is it? They haven't released it yet. I mean... It doesn't matter how they release it. If they put it out in theaters, I'll go see it in theaters. If they put it out on Blu-ray, just just straight from just straight to Blu-ray, I'm sure fans, you know, will like it. You know, it, I mean, we'll see it in your way. I just wish that they would hurry up and release it because every time someone asks about it, they say it's coming out soon. Well, I mean, we've been waiting since April of 2014, so I kind of wish that they'd hurry up with that. Now the next one is a Nightmare on Elm Street. Now, I remember watching this one and thinking um, that it was, a, it was such an, a unique film. You know, there's a guy, a dead guy, coming in someone's dreams and killing people in their dreams. And I remember out of the three major killers, you know, you got Freddy, you got Jason, and then you got uh, Michael. J Freddy um, has always been scarier to me than Jason. I don't know why. I, I remember being really creeped out by... Uh, a Nightmare on Elm Street, and I still do. And everything about this movie is great, from the acting um, to, of course, the uh, you know the death scenes to the music. I love the music in this movie. You know, not not just the theme song, but the music all the way around. You know, and it's got. I think this has some one of the best horror film soundtracks of all time. And um, I love everything about this movie. I know that I you know I don't need to talk about it because I'm sure everyone has seen it, but I love this movie. And now the next one is one movie I've talked about so many times. It was the first horror film that I saw when I was a little kid. Six years old, I think. Child's Play. Um, I really don't need to talk about it anymore because I'm sure you guys are sick of hearing me talk about this movie. One of my all-time favorites. And it was one movie that really messed me up as a kid. And finally, my number one horror film, and I'm sure you guys already know this, so I'm not even going to talk too much about it. Halloween. Truly a horror classic and one of the top, at least in the top five greatest horror films of all time. Right here. Timeless classic. I love everything about this movie. And I don't even need to talk about it. But anyway guys, that was it. That's my 25 favorite horror films. And like I said, um, I would say the last five or... I would say I would say the 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 last seven films I talked about are probably my top seven films, and then the rest of them are just random, you know, horror films that I love, you know. And it's really hard for me to pick 
you know, which ones I like better than the other ones. It, you know, it, it's hard for me to do. So I know that this wasn't really like a top 25 to 1. You know, it wasn't a 25 to 1 video. I was mostly just naming 25 of my favorite horror films. And there are so many other movies that I would have loved to talk about. Um, well, I don't really need to talk about a lot of them because most of you guys have seen them. But of course, I love, you know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Reanimator, Battle Royale. Um, I really did, I really enjoy the first Jeepers Creepers movie, you know. Um, there's just so many movies that I would I would have talked about, but I didn't want these videos to be very, very long. So I decided to keep it 25, and I know there's, you know, so many other horror films that I would love to talk about, but I narrowed it down to these, and I can honestly say that these 25 are my all-time favorite horror films. So anyway guys, thanks for watching. Again, let me know what you guys think about these movies, and let me know what are your favorite horror films as well. Um, I will be doing another video before Halloween, um, showing off, you know, my, ha my house all lit up, and um, I'll probably post that tomorrow, because I'm not going to be home on Halloween. But anyway guys, thanks for watching, thanks to everybody for subscribing and commenting, I really appreciate the support from each and every one of you, and I'll see you all later.